here we are going to discuss about uh, the berry aneurysm berry aneurysm it is the aneurysm of the cerebral arteries so because of the aneurysm shape is sacular we will call it as a sacular berry aneurysm of the cerebral arteries so what is the definition of the berry aneurysm over here it is a sacular dilation of a cerebral artery that is typically located at the base of the brain that is around the circle of villus we can see the base of the brain as well as interpeduncular fossa over here and surrounding the interpeduncular fossa we can see the circle of villus so at the circle of villus any artery may be vulnerable to the development of this berry aneurysm so that's the reason we will call it as berry aneurysm is the aneurysm of the cerebral arteries located at the base of the brain so what will be the epidemiology of these aneurysms in general we can say it has risk factors hemodynamic stress whenever the hemodynamic stress is increased that leads to the development of berry aneurysm or maybe presence of hypertension of any cause more commonly the malignant hypertension or severe hypertensive crisis may cause berry aneurysms and also may be due to the coactation of aorta or atherosclerosis so what is the coactation of aorta it is the constriction of the aorta which is usually located below the arch vessels so because of this which increases the arterial pressure proximal to the constriction including the arch vessels the aortic valve as well as the left ventricle so because of this what happens is because of this constriction because of the increase in the backward pressure there will be more blood which is diverted towards the internal carotid artery so from the internal carotid artery more blood is pumped to the circle of villus so any weakest point in the circle of villus may be vulnerable to the development of such kind of aneurysms so there's a reason hypertension atherosclerosis coactation of aorta so all these are considered to be the etiological factors for the development of berry aneurysm in general for examination point of view what they ask you in the exam is what is the most common site of a berry aneurysm the most common site is at the junction of the communicating branches of the anterior cerebral artery which is called as anterior communicating artery so the communicating branch of anterior cerebral arteries which is also called as the anterior communicating artery is the most common anatomical location for the development of berry aneurysms the question comes over here is why not the berry aneurysms are seen in these anterior cerebral artery why it is only seen in anterior communicating artery the main reason is the communicating branches of the anterior cerebral arteries or any other communicating branches of the circle of villus especially they lack the internal elastic lamina or in general we can say they lack the elastic lamina as well as smooth muscle so because of these communicating branches they lack smooth muscle as well as elastic lamina the integrity of the vessel wall is severely compromised so because of the integrity of the vessel wall is severely compromised especially in the communicating branches of the cerebral arteries here we are talking about the anterior communicating artery which is joining the two anterior cerebral arteries the integrity is too much compromised so whenever there is an increase in the hemodynamic stress or hypertensive crisis more blood is diverted to the circular villus so these vulnerable sites where they are extremely weak are more susceptible to the development of aneurysms because especially the cerebral arteries are absolutely fine because they contain elastic lamina they contain smooth muscles but what about the communicating branches 
the communicating branches lack elastic lamina and the communicating branches also lack smooth muscles because of this they are considered to be the weakest part of the circle of willis and predisposes to the development of aneurysms now what happens if these aneurysms rupture so rupture of these aneurysms releases blood into the subarachnoid space or maybe into the brain parenchyma so until rupture in vast majority of the cases these very aneurysms are asymptomatic but the clinical findings or clinical manifestations are more commonly seen in the ruptured berry aneurysms so what about the clinical findings of a ruptured berry aneurysm patients often complain of sudden onset of severe occipital headache which is best described by the patient as the worst headache i have ever had this is how the patient often describes about the occipital headache whatever he is experienced because of the ruptured berry aneurysm not only that there will be a severe nuchal rigidity which is called as rigidity of the neck especially because of irritation of the meninges so nuchal rigidity severe occipital headache or the two important clinical findings what we will identify after the ruptured berry aneurysms now let us talk about the complications of a ruptured berry aneurysm death may occur shortly after the bleed and this rebleeding sometimes can produce hydrocephalus from blockage of the foramina of the ventricles by means of blood because whenever the foramina are blocked there is no way the cerebrospinal fluid to escape from one ventricle to the other that leads to accumulation of the csf causes hydrocephalus and also severe neurological deficits are seen because of the accumulation of the blood in the brain parenchyma all these are the important uh, complications we will notice once the aneurysm is ruptured next is the diagnosis the diagnosis is usually made by the ct scan but the definitive test for the berry aneurysm is the angiography so by this we completed the module called as the berry aneurysm